Hello again YouTube. I'm all fresh out the shower because I've been working on the Escort and I have got stinking. It is humid today and everything has stuck to me so I've, I've done you the uh, honour of getting myself all washed up before I, before I do my intro and my outro. So, welcome again to the channel. You'll notice that the car right now has a steering wheel and it's on the right side of the car where it belongs of course if you live in Britain. Now you'll know from the begin from the early showings this is a left-hand drive car or was a left-hand drive car and I uh, always intended to convert it over the right-hand drive. But I was never I was never prepared for uh, how much work is involved in converting an Escort to right-hand drive and left-hand drive. I, in my ignorance, simply thought it's a case of move the pedal box across and swap everything over. But almost everything is handed. The steering column is handed. The dials are handed. The little bracket there that holds the steering column in place is handed. Everything. The only thing that isn't handed is the pedal box. And I, I ditched that because I'm doing a bias pedal box in it. So, hey ho. But so you'll see what we've done today to rehand that bracket there. I did think I'd have to build one from scratch, but you'll see what we did to get over that. And another little bracket underneath to hold everything in place. So, I hope you enjoy watching. Uh, thank you for the new subscribers again. Welcome, welcome along to the channel. You're very welcome. Please do comment and share and uh, encourage others to subscribe too. So what I need to do is cut this bracket off and see if I can angle it the other way. If not, make a replica of it, but in reverse form so I can bolt the steering rack up to there. Because you'll see, you can't really just bolt it straight up to there because it's got a bolt under this strengthening plate here which then tucks up under the dash there somewhere which we also need to make a, a receiver for that so it's a surprising amount of work just to swap the steering wheel across and from this side you can really see the angle coming through there so it's not straight it is quite a, a dangle there so on the other side on the left hand drive it would have been coming through at that angle and of course you need uh, or right and drive rack so it's uh the, the rack is obviously handed you can't just swap it around because the pinion gear this arrangement there will be on the wrong side and you can't it's just no way around that so if you're converting from left hand drive to right hand drive the obvious is we move in the plate across but i've had a new bulkhead so that's that's already part of that but not the end of the world to do that anyway because they that's the one from the original left hand drive bulkhead which i took drilled the spot welds out of and reused it on this side so it's just a case of measuring across the holes and everything onto that side then putting a, a patch in there to, to to block up the gaps there so that's actually the easier part of it this bracket which fits up onto that side of there like so that's where the steering bracket mounts onto and there's a bracket in there that we need to copy as well and do make a reverse of but this piece we can reuse I think I can't see that that's handed apart from that hole there I'm not quite sure what that's for probably just for cables to come through possibly so that's not the end of the world I've got to put another hole in that because you know unbolt that and do that. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is measure where these holes here are in relation to the center of the dash. So work out where the center of the dash is, measure to those, then transfer those holes over there. Okay, so using a square, I've used this. This is definitely central on the dashboard, so use a square both ways, that way and that way. Let's bring us to a mark there. Which I've then squared down both ways, that way and that way to bring us down there. And underneath here, there's a hole which I thought hmm, that might be central, but it's not. So if you're doing this, don't trust that hole, it's not central. There's our center line there. So what I need to do now is measure from that center line back to these two holes, and then transfer that measurement across to underneath here and drill two holes. Right, so I've, I've cut this bracket off because it's going to get in my way for drilling the holes and it had to come off anyway. And interestingly, it looks like 
it to be able to reuse it just because it will twist on there like so and just clamp these tight when it's in place where we want it and weld it and weld it back on it'll be fine all right and that transpires to those two holes there which are three and a half inches from each other so that's measured across from there to there and to be absolutely sure I've measured from the center of that hole to the edge there which is 11 and a half and that's measures 11 and a half from there to the center of that hole there so we are in the right ballpark so I'm going to drill those out and then we can start putting things together Lovely, and just use a step drill in to finish them off to deburr them. But that's nice, they're nice and deburred on the inside. So now we fit that to there. We are mm -hmm. okay. So, look, taking another look at this again, this is handed even the bracket. So, I'm gonna have to. Make a copy of this, but in reverse. So that's not the end of the world. Measure up the thickness of this material there, which looks, I'd say, is 1.5 mil. Bang on 1.5. And that piece there makes sense if that's the same. Yeah, 1.5 again. Okay, so I'll dig out some 1.5 mil and we'll make a copy, a template of that, and a reverse replica. Right, after a rummage around in my scrap bin, I come up with, which is from the front of a SC170 I built years ago, and that is, measure it in the proper bit, 1.6, 1.5, there we go, 1.5 mil. And this is super tough stuff as well, because it forms part of the front crash um, section on the ST170. And of course, we're going to need a template of this. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. But I think I'm going to have a go with doing the uh, tape template first, rather than measuring and messing about. If I just smother this in tape and cut it off and see if it comes off, that would be the most accurate way of doing it. Right, now the question is, can we peel this off in one? We can certainly try. Here we go. So that's our basic shapes we're looking for. So of course we're going to do this in separate sections. So once it's uh, laid out, we can work out where our straight lines are and cut them off. We cut down those lines and that'll give us our individual pieces we're looking for.
because these of course are going to be reversed. Now, should we get away with bending that? I think we probably would get away with bending those flanges on the bottom of those pieces. Okay. So that would be that piece there, but reversed. You can see now really highlights. Get it in the shot, be a good idea. You can really see how much of a difference it is. Look, once it's reversed, how much further over it's going to take the steering rack compared to there. So on the car like that, with it bolted to the bottom of the dashboard, with it that way around, you can see how much further over that's a good three quarters of an inch difference across or half an inch difference across from center to center so that's quite important that that goes in the right direction i'm wondering if can we be clever here no i was wondering if i could just simply slit that out swap that swap that around and weld it back in again Oh, those pieces different. Okay, so that's that one. What does it look like if I put it on that way around? Hmm. Pretty much the same. Okay. Might have an even easier plan here now. If I take a slitting disc to this, Slit it down there, slit it down there, and across there. Flip that piece over, and uh, bend these across to suit the new shapes, and then weld it back in. Yes, I think that's going to be an easier thing to do than remaking the entire thing. And that keeps us our nice little uh, shapes there as well. Okay, we have a plan. Just like so. Okay, so I we're on to something there. Weld that back together. Like so. That takes us to where we should be. Okay, that's a considerably simpler way of doing that. Let's get the welder started up and wedge that back into place. Let's clean those up first. Lovely, that's all come through on the inside as well, quite nicely. So that's a nice strong weld. Just touch that up with a grinder just to tidy it up. And job's done on that front. And just for fun, I thought I'd include some fake cold welding, as you see on the internet sometimes. Just some clever editing, that's all. This is reality. Right, well, that made a simpler job of that. 
So that's uh, quite happy with that is. I'm not going to worry about painting it or anything yet because I've got to weld it onto the steering column yet. And from this side you can see the weld is penetrated nicely. So I don't have to worry about strength, it's all good. Ah, so it turns out this is handy after all. There's a captive nut plate in here that sits on there and slides backwards and forwards to the captive nut. But to suit the right hand drive, that needs flipping around. And then those little tabs twisting back over again. Now you notice I've, put, I've welded some nuts on here because I've, I've only got metric bolts. So I've, uh, rather than waiting for new ones, the new Imperial ones to come through, I've just uh, welded some metric nuts, captive nuts in the back of there. Same job, does the same thing. Okay, so that's something that needs to be done as well. And that's it with the tabs twisted over, just with a pair of grips like that down there. Happy days. Right, so my intention now is to put this plate up in behind there and bolt that up to it. So we can at least sense check where we're going with this before we go any further. Well, that's looking very promising. We can just weld that back under there. So happy days. Before we do that, finalise that position, I think I'll get this bracket sorted out on the flip side of the, the support plate there next. So we need that bracket there and that's not going to be so easy to get out. I'm not overly worried about drilling it out. I could use spot welds um, just in there which I could drill out and pull it out. That Then that means I'm going to have to mess about with welding and what have you. Um, so what I think I'll just do, I can't get tape in there to take a tape template of it. So I'm going to measure it up and make some drawings and make a reverse of what's there. That's me drawing. I'm going to try and make sense of it for you. Get the light down properly. Right. Okay, so that's a cut line straight up the top. That's a cut line down the edge there. Hole there, hole there, and that's a bend line. Now, of course, this is going to be reversed. So I'll cut this out now, and then I'll transfer it onto a bit of steel. Right, got a piece of that 1.5 mil cut out. This is the super super strong stuff so i think i will try bending it but i think i'll try i'll have to get it glowing first before we bend it so let's uh mark off our first bend i think first actually i think i'll do is i'll pinpoint these um holes and drill those out let's do that first Lovely. Right, I just drill those out on the pillar drill now, and then we can look at doing some bending. Now, I must remember to bend this in the opposite direction to what is on the car. So maybe I should bend this up first, just so I know where I'm going. All right, for we that took some drilling. Okay, so what I need to do now is score these lines. And bend this where it needs to be bent in the, in the right direction so I know where I'm going. Right, yes, that's the, that's the shape we're trying to make. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So, start in with this one. Bending down to nothing. Here we 
we're going that way to it. Okay, let's <coughs> get a blow lamp on and see what damage we can do. Okie dokie. Next one. <laughs> Too hot to hold them, even with the gloves on. Okay. How are we doing? Where's my template? There we go. Next challenge. Is to get 20 mil down through there. Right, let's make that piece toasty. Okay, a quick test fit has revealed that this piece needs to come down a bit more. And the chances of me getting that just like this. What is going? I've kneeled it a little bit. Oh, yeah. There's no chance of doing that previously. Okay, maybe I can just carry on with oiking it over like this. Okay, I'm going to try that on the car and see what we got. Oh, it's got to come a fair bit more. It doesn't really matter if this comes down with it because it will help a little bit. In fact, let's try that. Okie doke, that'll do us. So, what we'll do now is spot weld that to the bulkhead, the bulkhead, and drill through from the top down, and then spot weld that in place. Um, before I do that, I think I'll take the sharp edge off of there, because that's almost certainly going to give me a laceration in the future. Right, oh, there is the finished bracket. So we'll uh, work out where to put the spot weld through for that, drill that through now, and then uh, bang it in place. Yeah. Okay. You may have miscalculated where my spots are supposed to go, but you know, I found it eventually. We soon drill, we soon weld those back up again, so I'm not too worried. But there we go, plenty of spot welds in there now to clamp that in place. What extra holes? Yeah, there's no extra holes there, it's all in your imagination. That's all fine.
that's that all welded under there nice and solid that's not going anywhere and we're all ouch there's my elbow we're all connected up in there now right let's stick a steering wheel on it lovely Right, of course nothing's been tightened up yet because this is just a dry build really <clears throat> but here we have steering it's surprisingly light as well but having said that we don't have an engine in yet so that's probably why that is right okay so that's just one part of converting from left hand drive to right hand drive like i said the pedal box has already been done because I've replaced the bulkhead anyway, but that's quite an easy part of it. So what we've had to do on this one is alter the direction of uh, of angle on that, make a bracket up in there, and that's it really, and a right-hand drive rack. So that's one part of it. Uh, next time we'll be looking at moving the dash across. I have a six dial dash hiding up in the corner up there somewhere, but I need to get a dash top. I may get one of the uh, fiberglass ones that a couple of folks are selling. They look pretty good and possibly I'll, I'll, I'll cover that in vinyl just to make it more uh, authentic. I hope you enjoyed what we did there. It was like I said in the, in the beginning, it was more work involved in this than meets the eye. Um, there, were, there are other things as well involved with which are handed, like the bonnet pull. Um, I don't think I'll even bother with that because bonnet pullers on escorts are always a bit of a pain, they always get jammed, they're always a bit of a nuisance so I'll probably just stick with bonnet pins in the car which will go with the look of the car anyway and uh, that'll be that. The other thing that's handed <coughs> is the scuttle grill and the wipers so that needs chopping about to make that fit as well. You can get new scuttle grills, which are handy ones, but they're surprisingly expensive, which I suppose is not that surprising because a fair bit of work goes involved in, in making one. But I reckon we can chop a piece out of this and shuffle it around to, to hand this. So that'll be the next video, how to make that right shape. Unedited version. This is what really happens. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of Dave's garage. <laughs> Once we're pinches onto the uh, front cover here. Um, front. Take screws out. What the? What was your question? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> uh. Uh. Go on. Uh, we need a new ring altogether. <laughs> <laughs>